In the opening scene, a young scout boy is standing at a busy intersection in Bangkok. Amidst the hustle and bustle of the traffic, he notices an elderly woman struggling to carry her bags across the street. Seeing her difficulty, the boy rushes to her aid, trying to assist her in crossing the road safely. However, in the confusion of the moment, he drops his mobile phone on the street and leaves it behind while helping the woman to safety first. Just as he turns to retrieve his phone, the traffic lights change and a speeding bus hits him leading to his untimely death. Chivalry is not dead. Chivalry kills. The next scene introduces the protagonist, Fuchit Poingnathong. Why do I feel like this guy's name is gonna get this video demonetized? Who is facing numerous challenges in his life. He is a salesman at Yamaha Company, where he is constantly belittled by his boss and colleagues alike. In addition, his girlfriend seems to have broken up with him in order to be a pop star, leaving him emotionally shattered. Despite his best efforts to make ends meet, Fuchit is struggling with his finances, living alone in a small apartment and burning burdened with mounting debts that he cannot seem to overcome. The constant pressures of his life are taking a toll on him, and he is growing increasingly desperate to find a way out of his predicament. On a certain day, Fudget heads out to a school to sell his product to a potential client. However, he is crestfallen to discover that his colleague has already made the sale there. The very next day, Fudget leaves his home to go to work, but to his dismay, he finds that his car has been repossessed by the creditor due to his failure to pay off his debts. Fudget's day at work takes a turn for the worse when he is called to his boss's office and told to resign due to his poor sales performance. Returning to his desk, he is further disheartened to find a pile of overdue bills from credit companies, adding to his already mounting financial troubles. Feeling depressed, Fuchit goes to the staircase to gather his thoughts and have a cigarette, but his frustration only intensifies when he realizes he has run out of them. To make matters worse, his mother calls and asks him to send money to pay for his younger sister's schooling, despite his precarious precarious financial situation, Fudget agrees to send the money. Just then, his phone rings again, and he answers, only to hear a stranger on the other end offering him a chance to win 10,000 baht. Initially, Fudget suspects that it's a prank call from his colleague or friends, but the caller proceeds to reveal personal details about him such as his full name, age, and employment status, which leave him wondering. I mean, sounds like it's probably his friends. The caller then tells Fudget that he simply needs to swat a fly that is buzzing around him right now. If he completes the task, he will win a cash prize worth 10,000 baht. Fudget is skeptical, but after some convincing from the anonymous caller, he decides to give it a try. He rolls a newspaper and easily swats the fly. The next second, surprisingly, he receives a message confirming that 10,000 baht has been transferred to his bank account. As Fudget gasps in excitement, the caller offers him the chance to win 50,000 baht if he eats the dead fly. Uncertain and hesitant, Fudget returns to his desk with the dead fly fly in his hand, contemplating whether to go through with it or not. However, after a while of deliberation, he pops it into his mouth. One of his co-workers, Tong, notices this, but she's so bewildered that she doesn't speak a word. After some time, Fudget receives yet another phone call, and the caller informs him that he has the chance to win an enormous sum of money, 100 million baht, if he completes a total of 11 more tasks. Despite feeling uneasy about the mysterious caller and the dubious nature of the game, Fudget is desperate for cash, so he agrees to the terms and conditions. The caller warns him that if he quits, or if anyone discovers that he's playing the game, he'll have to forfeit all his winnings immediately. For the third task, Fudget is assigned to go to a kindergarten and make at least three children cry. Although hesitant at first, he recalls his own traumatic childhood experiences with his father crushing his toys. So, he steals toys from the children and makes them cry. The fourth task involves stealing money from a beggar, a reprehensible act that Fudget reluctantly carries out. Things take a hard turn with the fifth task. Fudget is ordered to visit a high-end Chinese restaurant restaurant where he is presented with a plate containing feces and instructed to eat it. Although he feels disgusted and protests, the caller insists that he complete the task or risk forfeiting his prize. Flashbacks of being bullied into eating dog poo as a child further add to his distress, but ultimately, Fudget forces himself to finish the plate. Even this time, Tong catches him in the act. She starts assuming that he has gone mental. Either that or he's broke, you know? As the twisted game progresses, the challenges become increasingly degrading, unlawful, and deadly. Prior to embarking on his sixth task, Fudget is instructed to hand his phone over to a deranged individual at a bus stop. Through him, Fudget learns that his next challenge is to fight a group of teenage hooligans on a moving public bus in order to acquire another cell phone. This will not be as cool as Shang-Chi. In 
Initially, Fletchett attempts to negotiate with the delinquents for the phone, but when they start to bully him, he ends up getting into a physical altercation with them. During the brawl, Fletchett and one of the hooligans fall out of the bus, sustaining injuries. However, the fight is not over yet, as the teenage thug pulls out a knife and advances towards him. Just as he is about to attack, Fletchett grabs a large piece of meat and strikes the assailant's head, rendering him unconscious and fulfilling his sixth task. The next challenge is even more harrowing. Fletchett is instructed to break into a house and retrieve the corpse of a deceased individual. The problem is that it lies at the bottom of a well. Not only that, Fletchett also has to notify the deceased family members, and the total time for the entire task is just 10 minutes. It is a momentous and scary challenge, but since Fletchett has come this far, there is no looking back. As he descends into the well, he notices a swarm of cockroaches on his arm that startles him and causes him to fall into the water. After taking some time to gather his composure, Fletchett ties the rotting corpse to himself and begins to climb out of the well. Despite the limited time frame, he manages to get out and call the family members right before the deadline expires. Shortly thereafter, Fletchett is given another task, one that involves physically assaulting his ex-girlfriend's current boyfriend. Sure, says Fletchett. Surprisingly, Fletchett is quick to accept this one. Oh. <laughs> I was joking. And without hesitation, he picks up a nearby chair and unleashes a brutal beating on the man until he is knocked unconscious. However, Fletchett is soon overcome with guilt for his violent actions, so he quickly rushes the injured man to the hospital as Fletchett continues to progress through the increasingly challenging and morally questionable tasks. The police begin to take notice of his criminal behavior. Led by Officer Surachai, a team of cops start to track Fletchett down, suspecting that his crime spree is part of a larger and more sinister scheme. Meanwhile, Tong becomes increasingly concerned about Fletchett's odd behavior. Piecing together clues she overheard at a police station, she uses her computer expertise to hack into a website called 13. There, she finally comes across the live stream of Fletchett's horror show. Every move he makes, everywhere he goes, is being recorded. However, Tong has no idea that she is also being closely monitored, and that she has unwittingly become a part of the very game she is investigating. In the next scene, Fletchett who is now a wanted criminal, finds himself in the hospital. There, he sees news that the police are after him. His phone suddenly rings, and the same mysterious caller warns him to avoid the police, as his capture would mean the end of the game, and the prize money would be lost. Despite the potential danger, Fletchett continues with his next task, the eighth one, which requires him to help a patient escape from room number 803 of the hospital. Hiding from the authorities, Fletchett reaches the specified room. Surprisingly, the patient he is supposed to help is the same elderly woman from the first scene. With some quick thinking, Fletchett disguises himself as a ward boy and manages to load the old woman into a wheelchair and escape the hospital, right before Surichai and his team arrive. In the meantime, a higher-ranking police official orders Surichai to call off the pursuit of the wanted criminal. After leaving the hospital, Fletchett brings the elderly woman to her modest hut by the side of the main road. He then helps her dry her clothes by tying a silicone wire. However, unbeknownst to him, the other end of the wire is fastened across the main road and is invisible in the darkness. Soon after, a group of teenagers on motorbikes whiz by, completely unaware of the wire, resulting in a horrific accident that causes one of the riders to lose their life. This tragedy leaves Fletchett devastated, and he lashes out at the mysterious caller on the phone, who has been guiding him through these heinous tasks. As he is coming to terms with the grave consequences of his actions, Tong arrives on the scene and gets shocked to witness the aftermath of the accident. She implores Fletchett to turn himself into the police assuring him that they would understand the circumstances behind his actions. Tong also reveals that she knows about the game he has been playing. Just as they are speaking, the phone rings, and the caller informs Fuchet that the game is over, as someone else has discovered it. However, he gives Fuchet one final chance and assigns him another task, to kill Tong's dog. It turns out the little pup has been kidnapped and brought to the elderly woman's house already. When Tong sees him, she is taken aback. She begs Fuchet to spare her dog. However, the latter has become so obsessed with the game, he brings out a sharp weapon and mercilessly slays the innocent dog. Fletchett then warns Tong to stay away from him before speeding away in his car. Fletchett has truly embraced his name. After the incident, Tong, who is determined to uncover the mastermind behind all this, decides to head to the police station to report her suspicions. However, she has no solid evidence to prove her claims because the website, which she hacked previously, is now completely blank. Disheartened, 
ground. She leaves the station, feeling helpless and lost. As she walks out, she stumbles upon a group of villagers who are arguing amongst themselves. Tong approaches them to check on the matter and learns that someone has shockingly sliced their cow with a samurai sword. This sends shivers down her spine as she realizes that it's none other than Fudget. Tong follows the trail of blood he has left and reaches a strange room with the number 13 on it. However, as she is about to enter it, a man captures her from behind. Tong is then taken to the place where the reality game is being run from. As she enters the premises, she is confronted by the mastermind behind the game, a young boy named Ki. He is revealed to be the same scout boy that we saw at the start of the movie. Surprisingly, he never died. The old woman somehow saved his life. Tong tries to reason with him and asks him to put an end to the game, claiming that it has already taken the lives of many innocent people. However, Ki reveals that he is powerless to do so, because he is just a component of it, and the underground reality game involves players and viewers that perhaps number in the thousands. Elsewhere, as Fudget reaches the final destination of the game, he is taken aback by the revelation that the game is a social experiment, and all his actions were being monitored and recorded the entire time. He is then confronted with a daunting task of stabbing his own abusive father, John Adams, who is strapped to a wheelchair and appears to be unconscious. This final task promises the prize money of 100 million baht, and Fudget is torn between the temptation of winning the prize and his conscience. He starts having flashbacks of the time his dad did good things for him, like chasing away the bullies and bringing him new toys. Ultimately, Fudget decides to give up the game, as he remembers his mother's wish that he should never become a bad person like his father. But. Just as he is about to leave, Adams wakes up and stabs his son to death. With this, Key from the control room announces that Adams is the winner of 100 million baht. It turns out he was also playing his own game, and the final task was to kill his son. While Fudget hesitated to complete the task, Adams didn't. Tong is devastated to witness the cruel turn of events, and she screams at Key. However, the young mastermind remains unperturbed. He instead reveals that thousands of people, just like Fudget and Adams, are playing the game currently. Moreover, millions of viewers are watching and betting on the game's worldwide, and that is where all the money comes from. Saying this, he calls his security and escorts Tong away from there. In the final scene, we see her waking up on a bus bench, disoriented and confused. Tong is found by Surachai, who is still investigating the deaths related to the game. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.